On this cold day in Boulder, Brian and I are going to show you how to collimate your telescope using the laser collimators. So follow along. Alright, so we have one of the telescopes set up here already. Hopefully you know how to do this much already. And the first step what Brian's going to do is put in the adapter to hold the laser collimator. And this is the one and a quarter inch barrel adapter that goes right into the camera port for the telescope and tighten it up with a couple of screws and we're ready for the laser collimator. This is the laser collimator box. Brian will open it and inside you see the collimator which is this device here plus the battery. We always store it with the battery out. So Brian's going to take this and install the battery. So you unscrew the top. There's no on off switch for this and you put it in negative side down. There's a little picture on the inside of the barrel if you forget. Screw the tip on and then while you're screwing it in you'll watch the other end and you'll know the laser's on when the red dot appears in your hand. Okay so it's on now so back it off just a little bit while we're getting set up and now it's ready to install in the eyepiece holder. So you now just put that in. Now there's a trick to this. If you notice there's two little rubber stripes on the barrel and those are designed to squish out and tighten it up inside so you're not ever going to use the screws these screws to tighten down the laser collimator. That'll just get in the way. But it's this knurled knob here, this um, rubber knob, that we're going to use. So you, if it's too tight to put in and you want to make sure that those screws are, are clear inside the barrel so pull it out and you feel it and okay don't feel anything if you try to put it in the barrel and it's too tight to just easily slide in that means you have to loosen that neural knob to take some of the pressure off of the the rubber o-rings and it won't ever be totally loose so once it's loose and you know it's loose you just kind of slide it in and then you'll notice there's this port on the side here you want that to point towards the back end of the telescope where the primary is and with it sitting in here as Brian's doing you tighten it up and make it so that it's got a little bit of snugness to it and it doesn't want to rotate on its own what that's doing for you is automatically making sure that the laser collimator is centered in this barrel which is essential for the collimation process to get you oriented you're looking at the primary at the bottom of the telescope and there's a little red laser dot there. We'll explain that more in a bit. Then the secondary is closer to you and that whole housing is held up by those four veins and on the back side of that secondary housing are three screws. These three screws are used to tilt and tip the secondary to steer the laser onto the primary and this is what you're adjusting for the first step of the collimation. It was hard to film this next bit so I'm going to show you a little diagram. The first thing you see is the primary mirror and then there's a little white donut that's right there in the center of the mirror. When you turn the laser on a red dot appears. As you see here first it might not be in the center and your job is to move the secondary so that the little red dot gets to the center. Now getting it there precisely is actually a little tricky and can take more than a few minutes to get it right and it seems sometimes it seems like everything you do makes it worse. So don't try to get it perfect. So your goal is to try to get that red dot inside the little white donut. If you do that you're ready to go. And at the very end, once it's in place, you just want to make sure that you get to that point with the screws tight. The next step in this process is that we want to initialize the primary mirror. So we loosen the lock screws. If you'll see, Brian is touching the skinny screws there, loosening them up so that they're not contacting 
the mirror housing. Then you take the big knobs and you turn those clockwise until they won't turn anymore. You're not trying to make them really tight, you're just trying to bring it all the way up against the back of the focus. Now this is intentionally taking it out of collimation and you're just starting from the same point every time you do this collimation process. So now that's set and then you leave the screws loose at this point in the step. You see two laser dots here on the secondary. The goal is to merge the two dots into one. To do this, you adjust the large knobs on the back of the primary. One of these knobs won't move the dot in a good direction. Leave that one tight. Using the other two knobs, bring the dots together. When you're close, a dot will appear in the bullseye in the collimator at the eyepiece location. Put that dot in the hole. You are now aligned. The last thing to do is to tighten the small bolts to lock the mirror into place. As you do this, you will want to make sure the optics are still aligned once you're tight. It helps to tighten each lock a little bit at a time, moving from one lock bolt to the next. If you tighten the same amount, you will get back to aligned each time you tweak all three bolts. At the end, you will be tight and aligned. Complete the process by removing the collimator and eyepiece holder. Take the battery out and put everything away. And that completes the collimation process. If you get good at it, it just should take a couple of minutes after setting up the telescope to get everything collimated.